Hello, everybody. I'm Mickey Feldman Simon. I am the founder of I'm Back at Work, and I am very excited to have you here today um, at our webinar with Angela Lucier. And just before we get started, I want to make sure that you can all navigate the webinar panel. And um, your panel may look like the image here on the right or the image on the left. And to open and close it, you click on the orange arrow and it will open or close. You can also click at the top of the panel and then drag it out of the way if it is obstructing the view of the presentation. Now, in the last five minutes of the webinar, we will also have a Q&A session and you can type in your questions by clicking here on the gray, um, the gray bar and then type in your questions in the blue rectangle just underneath here. And we will address all of your questions at the end of the webinar. Now I am very excited to, um, to introduce Angela Lucier. Angela is an award-winning speaker. She's also a five-time author, a two-time TEDx presenter, and she's also the CEO and founder of the Speaker Sisterhood. The Speaker Sisterhood is a network of speaking clubs that help women discover, awaken, and create their voice through the art of public speaking. Angela is the host of Claim the Stage. It's a public speaking podcast, and it was rated for it's a public speaking podcast for women, and it was rated number one on the inspiring podcasts list by Forbes in 2017. Angela is also a contributor to Huffington Post and her work has been featured on ABC, NBC, Forbes, Virgin and Entrepreneur. And I'm excited to have Angela here with us today to present the webinar on Look the Part, how to present yourself with confidence and power in interviews and in groups. Now we are going to actually turn the PowerPoint off and we are going to focus just on Angela. Hello, Angela. Hi, Mickey. Thanks for having me. I want to say welcome to everyone who's here for the webinar today and thank you for showing up. I know this is not everyone's favorite topic. <laughs> Presentations, public speaking, job interviews, raising your hand in a meeting. These are all things that typically invoke a lot of anxiety and fear. So I want to say congratulations for showing up with courage and wanting to build this skill set because it is so critical to your success. The thing that connects all of us is communication. So the better that you are at speaking and presenting yourself, the more opportunities you will get because when you speak, people notice you and you can create change. You can be acknowledged by people who might not otherwise know you're there and your ideas can be out in the world. So today we're going to talk about how to present yourself with more power, more confidence and more ease in a variety of difficult conversations. And this can range from being in a job interview to giving a, a, speak, a, a, a speech on stage at a conference just raising your hand in a meeting or having a difficult conversation you know with your boss or with a friend all of these these different instances require the same skill set so what we're going to talk about today are three things we're going to talk about your body and how to prepare it effectively we're going to talk about your mind <laughs> and we're going to talk about your spirit because these three things when working together are what make a winning combo for presenting yourself successfully. I'm not gonna use any slides today, so you might wanna grab a piece of paper to take some notes. And I'm gonna keep this really basic and really practical, and we're gonna actually stand up right now so you can practice some things as I'm teaching you. So maybe move your chair out of the way, get yourself set up so you have a little bit of room. We're not gonna move around a lot, but I think it's much more useful if you do it with me than me trying to teach you and then you do it later. So we're gonna start with the body piece of preparing yourself for presenting yourself with power and poise. I'm just gonna move my camera a little bit because I'm gonna move back so you can see my whole body, sort of. <laughs> what we're gonna do first is practice something called power posing. 
And you may have heard of this because Amy Cuddy, a researcher at Harvard, gave one of the most popular and famous TED Talks of all time about this very subject. So we're gonna start with our hands on our hips and our feet about hip distance apart. And you wanna keep your, your knees not necessarily locked, but just kind of loose and, and just stand up straight. So um, looking straight ahead and with your hands on your hips, this is a great tool to practice for two minutes before going into a job interview, before taking a test or giving a presentation, because what it does is it lowers cortisol levels, the stress hormone, and it raises testosterone levels, which make you feel more powerful. And in studies conducted by Amy Cuddy and her team, they learned that anyone who did this power pose for two minutes before doing one of these difficult tasks was more successful because they walked into the situation feeling more powerful and less timid and afraid. So this is one version of the power pose that you'll do for two minutes to prepare yourself, or you can do this version. Just kind of look like the Superman version. So this is the Wonder Woman, this is the Superman. <laughs> and you can choose which one you like better. I actually like this one better because it makes my shoulders relax and my back relax. And it makes me just feel like more in my body because I can really feel my arms and my torso. But you can do the one that you like better and make it part of your practice before you're going to do something difficult so that you're just automatically doing it and it's helping to relax you before this important moment. So this is the first thing I want to teach you to get into your body, power posing. The second thing I want to show you is how to stand effectively when you're in front of a group. You may have to do a job interview where part of it is giving a presentation, or you may be speaking at a conference and you have to stand in front of a group. One thing I see specifically women do a lot when they stand in front of a group is this, crossing their legs. What does this look like? <laughs> Looks like I have to go to the bathroom, right? It not only is distracting because you, you look like you need to leave and go to the bathroom, but it also makes you off kilter and it's easier to fall over when you don't have a strong base. So what I recommend is to stand like you did in the power pose with your feet hip distance apart, straight ahead, and plant yourself there. This creates a strong foundation and you're not kind of like a swaying palm tree because you've got the strong foundation to stand on. So once you have your feet hip distance apart, you now want to put 50% of your weight in each foot. So this might take a little bit of just feeling how much weight you have in your feet now. And you may notice that you tend to lean one way or the other. And it's important to do 50-50 because it helps your audience to focus and to see balance and to not be distracted by someone who's standing off to the side because that, again, doesn't look as powerful, right? So we want to stand with 50% of our weight in each foot. And now that you have 50% of your weight in each foot, you're gonna put 50% of your weight in the front on your toes and 50% on your heels. And this again, may be something you've never really paid attention to, but try just like swaying forward and back to try and feel the center point. You'll know when you get there. And this is like equilibrium, like you have achieved equal balance in both feet and now you've got the strong foundation. And I recommend practicing this when you're not on stage so that it's really easy when you are in front of people to get into the stance. When I'm at the grocery store, I always go to the cashier line and I wait instead of going to the self-checkout because it gives me a chance to just stand and practice this. <laughs> so if you ever see me in the grocery store in line, this is what I'm doing. <laughs> and it's really helpful because it trains you. And I also do it while I'm washing dishes. I just stand at the sink and I balance out. So that way when I am in front of a group of people, I just automatically very naturally do this and I don't even have to think about it. And that's the goal is to make this really simple and just be part of the process so you're not also, in addition to trying to remember, remember what you're trying to say, remembering how to stand. So practice this every day if you can for a couple minutes and it will become really natural for you to do when you're in front of a group. So that's the second thing I want to teach you about your body is how to stand in front of people so that you're powerful and you have that strong foundation. People often ask me when giving a speech, should they move around a lot? Should they walk around when they're presenting their points? 
And my answer is absolutely not. <laughs> That's distracting for your audience too. Just stay planted unless movement adds something to the story. So if you're telling somebody in your, in your presentation, I was running to the store, okay, you can run. I was driving to the store, you can move your arms. Otherwise, don't move. Just stay planted and use your arms for gesturing. Third tip I wanna share with you is about breathing. Have you ever been in the middle of a sentence giving a presentation or answering a question in a job interview, and all of a sudden, you run out of air. And you realize you still have words left that you want to say in that sentence, but there's no more air in the lungs. I want to help you avoid that. Because <laughs> there's nothing worse than gasping for air when you're in front of a group, because what it does is it creates that same response in the people who are in front of you. Imagine being in the audience and watching a speaker who is out of breath and taking these little shallow breaths. Everyone in the audience is now doing the same thing because they're watching you and they're empathizing with you. So what you need to do as the speaker or the, you know, the person in the job interview is to practice breathing before you get in there so you can take long, deep breaths that will hold you through each sentence. And here's how to do it. We're going to stay standing, I'm going to have you close your eyes, and we're going to do an exercise called four, eight, seven. And what it is, is you breathe in for four seconds, you hold your breath for eight seconds, and then you breathe out for seven seconds. And I'm going to count for you, and we're going to do it four times, so all you need to do is, is breathe, and then I'm going to check in with you about how you feel. So before we start, notice your body. Do you feel any tension? Do you feel any stress? Do you feel any pain? Do you, is your breathing short, shallow right now? Now we're gonna try it out and then we're gonna check in and see how our bodies are doing at the end. So we're gonna take a deep breath in for four seconds. One, two, three, four. Hold for eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let it out for seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. In for four, one, two, three, four. Hold eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Out for seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now in for four, one, two, three, four. Hold for eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Out for seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. In for four, one, two, three, four. Hold eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Out for seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now do a check-in again. How's your body feeling? Is there less tension, less stress? Is your breathing more regulated? If you had a headache, is it gone? Is there maybe some, some tension released in your shoulders, in your back? This exercise is extremely helpful to do right after you do a power pose because it gives you a chance to relax your nervous system and get out of your head and regulate your breathing. And once you have this, this critical piece in place of your breath just being constant and not shallow, it will help you to feel relaxed when you walk into the room. I recommend practicing this 10 times before you walk in. And when I'm scheduled to give a speech at a conference and I'm sitting in the audience waiting for my turn, about 10 minutes before I'm scheduled to speak, I sit in my chair and I do this 10 times. And I will tell you, there is a huge difference between the start and the finish of doing this exercise, and it's so simple. And you can do it anytime. Anytime you're feeling any anxiety or fear, just sit and do this exercise, and it helps a lot. The fourth thing I wanna show you that's body related is about your jaw and your mouth and your tongue and relaxing this whole area. Because you can breathe you know, with deep breaths all day long and you could be in your power pose and you could have your foundation. But if your face is tense, 
you won't be able to enunciate and your words will come out really hard to hear. And so you need to relax your jaw and this whole area here so that it's easy for people to hear you. I had the pleasure of interviewing a voice coach in New York City, Elisa Weinzimmer, who works with actors and, and people in the theater and speakers to teach them how to use their voice appropriately. And they do this voice warm up exercise that I'm gonna teach you right now. And it's pretty funny and it's really simple and I call it the Muppet exercise. That's not what it's actually called, <laughs> but it's really fun and easy. So this is how it starts. You may have heard people make this noise before, so you're gonna practice making this noise. <laughs> Practice it with me. This exercise, you can keep trying it, not only helps to relax all these muscles, because you can feel them, they're kind of like loosening up as you're doing that, but it also helps to regulate your airflow. And it's really fun. So usually it makes me laugh. And I tend to do it when I wake up in the morning, because I just think it's a really fun thing to do, and I just like, will be alone in my bedroom laughing, and that's just <laughs> something I do. So the other half of this exercise, once you have that mouthpiece down, is to hang. And you make the noise while you're hanging. And the hanging part is what's helping to relieve a lot of the tension and stress that's built up all in here, right? That's helping to keep that whole, your face and your neck tense. So we're gonna just like hang for a minute, 30 seconds, and we're gonna make this noise together. And if you're at work, Maybe just make the noise quietly. It wasn't quite 30 seconds, but you get the idea. You can do that for as long as you need to so that you can feel relaxed and just let all of that tension out of your face. So these are the four things I want to teach you that will help you to get into your body and make sure that everything is relaxed and powerful and prepared before you walk in and give that presentation. All right, let's move over to our next section. We talked about body, right? Now we're gonna talk about mind. <laughs> Two really important questions you have to ask yourself before you give your presentation. You're gonna to wanna to write this down. It doesn't even matter. This is, this is also helpful in a job interview. This is helpful for any email you write, any press release you might write, a blog post. This is important for any time you're communicating with anybody, okay? The first question you need to ask yourself is, who is in my audience? Who is in my audience? And when I say who is in my audience, I mean, what do they do? What is their job? What do they care about? What are their fears? What are their challenges? And this means understanding the people you're talking to. If you're going to interview for a job and you know that they really need someone who's good at web development and that's what you do, you need to talk to them about their fears around web development. You, you know, you could, you could cater your whole answer to a question about, you probably don't want someone in here that you're paying a boatload of money who doesn't really know what they're doing. Let me tell you about the projects I've worked on that were web development related that will give you a good sense of what I can do. Right, so you're, what you're proving to them right there is that you understand them and that you have what they need. So that's the first question is, who is sitting in my audience? The second question you have to ask yourself is, what problem am I solving for them? What problem am I solving for them? And if you know the answers to these two questions, you're golden. You can build something so meaningful and so effective and so targeted that it'll be hard for them to not love you. And what also happens is when you know who's sitting in your audience and you know the problem you're solving for them, you're creating a goal for yourself, where you're trying to go, what you're trying to convey to them. And now you can work backwards to fill in all the information that helps you get to that goal, right? So if our goal is we want to convince these people that we are credible, in-demand web developers, now everything we say needs to point to that. 
The other piece to know about preparing your mind for speaking in front of others is having a few key points. Something that I see, especially newer presenters or entry level or people who haven't really been in the workplace for a while do is they tend to overstuff the burrito. <laughs> and what I mean by that is they want to throw everything out there in hopes that something will stick. And what that does is it overwhelms your audience. It makes them feel lost and confused and they tend to tune out and that's just not effective for anyone. So the best thing you can do is pick out your best two or three points that you really, really want to get across and then elaborate on them, provide examples, share stories, and get really, really clear on those couple of, of pieces of information and just focus on that. And that goes for your job interview. You know, people don't want to hire a jack of all trades. They want someone who has the specific skill set that the uh, job needs. If you're presenting a topic at a conference, you don't want to tell people every single thing you know about it. You want to tell them the most important things they need to know right now. So when I was putting this presentation together, I decided we're just going to focus on these three key elements, body, mind, and spirit. And I'm going to give you a couple of really important tips for each, but I'm not going to go into every single thing I know about public speaking and interviewing because that would be overwhelming and you would leave here feeling like, where do I start? So this way, we're just talking about some of the key areas, and then you can go home and apply what's most important to you when you're done. So that is mind. Asking yourself these two important questions, who is sitting in my audience, and what problem am I solving? And then only coming up with three key topics or points that you really want to share, and elaborating on them, and making sure that you're clear on what it means and how to implement it. That is mind. We're going to jump into the last piece, which is spirit. This is probably the least talked about part of presenting yourself, but it's so important because bringing enthusiasm and passion and love into your communication will infuse your words with energy that will be transcribed to your audience and they will love what you're talking about. The person who does this really, really well is Jimmy Fallon, who is the host of The Tonight Show. You've probably seen him on Saturday Night Live. If you've ever watched his show, you probably notice that he is filled with joy every single day. <laughs> I can't help but stop when I see a video from him in my Facebook feed and watch it because I know that just watching him for one minute is going to make me happy because we love watching people who are doing what they love. It's contagious. We love watching people who are excited to share their work. We love watching people who have that zest for life. And if you can infuse that spirit into what you're talking about, you will be so much more effective because other people can't wait to hear more about it. So if you're having fun as the presenter, guess who else is having fun? Your audience. But if you're bored by what you're saying, guess who else is bored? Yes, the people sitting in front of you. So your job as a communicator is to make sure that you're bringing the right energy every time. And if, if you find that the stuff you're talking about is just hard to get excited about, you need to dig deeper or you need to change what you're talking about because you're not doing anyone any favors by showing up unenthusiastic and lacking passion. I've never sat in the audience of a boring presentation and felt inspired to do something. If I sat in the audience of someone who was excited about their topic, was passionate to share it, was infusing love into their words, no matter what they were talking about, I would be excited about it. And I actually had the opportunity to sit in the audience a couple weeks ago where a woman shared a five minute speech about her love for farmers markets. And I've been to like hundreds of farmers markets and I've always been like, this is nice. You know, it's kind of fun. It's cool. But after I left that presentation, I was like, I love farmers markets <laughs> because she loved farmers markets. So your job as the speaker is to always try to bring that energy and love so that your audience gets excited about it too. So today we talked about a lot of different things. We talked about how to prepare your body, how to prepare your mind, and how to prepare your spirit. And the best way to prepare your spirit is to find what you love about your topic and bring that energy to your presentation, whether you're in that job interview, you're in an important meeting, or you're up on stage at a conference. So when you put these three elements together, 
You bring power and confidence because your body is relaxed, your mind is clear and focused, and your energy is positive and engaged with your topic and your audience. I hope you found this helpful. Please let me know if you need, if you have any questions. We have a couple minutes left, and I'm happy to answer any questions you have. Thank you, Angela. Well, thank you for all that um, um, very helpful information. So while you are typing in your questions, I, um, I will address any of your questions in just a moment. I want to introduce you to the new um, community that we started at I'm Back at Work. And it started from you guys. We listened to you. And we heard from you that you would like some more support. And we started um, a closed Facebook group where we can communicate on an ongoing basis, uh, answer any of your questions, provide you uh, daily materials, and also um, have experts come in, have Q&A webinars on a weekly basis with me where I can answer any questions that you have, um, work on best practices and improve your effectiveness in the job search make new connections, which is very important for your networking. And it also goes along with I'm Back at Work's mission that has been all along to help everybody, all women of all financial situations. And the cost of our community is only $29 for three months. So it really, the idea is for it to be affordable and provide you with the ongoing support um, that you need. Now, uh, we will address any questions that you may have. And we have a question from Kate. Kate is asking, any tips for controlling fidgeting? <laughs> yes, absolutely. A great way to control fidgeting is to watch yourself give a presentation in the mirror and watch when you fidget the most and try to notice like when, when that happens to you. You might notice that it happens when you're talking about something you aren't as confident about, or you might notice you do it in the beginning of your speech. And when you can target the areas when you're most apt to fidget, then you can create little uh, tricks for yourself so that you don't do it. One thing I used to do is I'd put something in my hand, like I would have a clicker if I was going to use slideshows, or I would have a handout in my hand, and it would just help keep my hand steady. Or you can use these tools to help tell the story. One thing you can do is if you're going to be trying to share something about like size or numbers, you can use these so that you can say like, oh, there were only a, a couple people or there were apples and there were oranges or two people called. So think about these as tools instead of just these like nervous energy producers. You never wanna put your hands in your pockets because that starts to break that trust with the audience because they may subconsciously wonder, why is she, what is she hiding? What's, go, what's in her pocket? And it's probably nothing, but you wanna avoid doing that. Another thing you can do is videotape yourself giving a speech. And again, it's like the mirror idea, of noticing the fidgeting, and then you can continue to work on it. The number one tip to help with fidgeting is practice. It's just to keep doing it over and over again so you can build the skill set and train yourself not to be doing a lot of this stuff, but just to have your hands in front of you. And I want to mention that I'm the CEO and founder of the Speaker Sisterhood, which is a network of public speaking clubs for women. And this is where women go to practice the skill in a very low threat environment. So if you have a presentation to give or you want to build the skill set, but not in front of your boss and, you know, at conferences, you can go to the clubs and you can practice giving speeches in front of a group of 15 like-minded, supportive, empowered women who can give you feedback and be an audience for you. So you can work on things like fidgeting, or if you say um a lot, or if you have a hard time organizing your ideas. And we have clubs both in uh, Massachusetts and around New England, and we also have clubs virtually that you can check out online. If you go to speakersisterhood.com and click on club directory, you'll be able to find them. Okay, well, thanks again, Angela. We don't have any more questions. I do hope that everybody um, takes note, took notes and practices these. A lot of webinars, a lot of interviews today are group interviews where you have to present yourself, not just sitting down, also actually provide a presentation. 
So thank you for joining us today and I hope to see you in our upcoming webinars. Thank you. We appreciate being here. Thanks for having me. Thank you, Angela.